All of the 10,000 species of bird that are alive today descended from only a handful of species of birds that survived the KPG extinction that caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. After the extinction event, the small amount of birds that survived spread out and diversified and gave rise to the modern birds as we know them today. However, unlike mammals, birds were also very diverse before the extinction, and along with the extinction of non-avian dinosaurs, thousands of species of ancient birds died as well. Birds evolved from dinosaurs in the Jurassic period about 150 million years ago, but by the early Cretaceous, 140 to 100 million years ago, they had adapted to fill many niches across the world, including some that had already evolved to become flightless, their wings reducing down to being small, and instead, like penguins, they made adaptations to become strong swimmers. They were called the Hesperornithians, named after the most common member of this group, Hesperornis. Hesperornis was discovered in Kansas in 1871 by the famous paleontologist Othniel Marsh, around the same area where he discovered the first pteranodon fossils just a year earlier that would have shared a habitat with Hesperornis. Unfortunately, the original discovery was missing a head, but the fossilized body was enough to tell that the creature was unusual. They were very large birds and they had tiny vestigial wings while having very strong legs. Some time later, a complete Hesperornis skeleton was found, and its skull was unusual too, as it had a row of small needle-shaped teeth down its mouth, a bird with teeth. At the time of the discovery, the link between birds and non-avian dinosaurs was not as strongly shown by the fossils that were available at the time, and so these animals were often treated as being distinct from one another. However, Archaeopteryx, the Jurassic bird with feathers and teeth, had been discovered at this point, and another bird with teeth named Ichthyornis was also known about, and Marsh commented that the discovery of these birds with teeth broke down the old distinction between birds and reptiles. Unlike many of the other toothed birds that lived during the Cretaceous, like Ichthyornis, among many others that flew, Hesperornis took a very different evolutionary pathway. The part of the world where they were discovered was under an ocean during the Cretaceous known as the Western Interior Seaway and their evolution favoured adaptation to make them strong swimmers, rather than good flyers, and Hesperornis was most likely the earliest bird to evolve back into being flightless. Hesperornis was similar to penguins in the case of being flightless birds that had evolved to be good swimmers, but the way they propelled themselves through the water would have been different. There is evidence that Hesperornis had webbed toes, and their legs were very similar in shape to the legs of foot-propelled diving birds, like loons and cormorants. Specifically, they had very short thigh bones, but very long shin bones. Additionally, their wings were tiny, to the point where they may have just been vestigial, and it is unlikely they were used for swimming like penguins, so a better comparison animal was probably the flightless cormorant that lives in the Galapagos Islands, and its wings have reduced down to the point where they can no longer fly, but they are strong swimmers, and swim with their feet. Although Hesperornis was most likely a strong swimmer, due to their body shape and proportions, it is likely they weren't as elegant on the land, perhaps only going on land to breed and care for their young. It was also suggested they couldn't even stand up, and may have pushed themselves across the ground on their belly like penguins do sometimes, although a more recent study of their legs suggests they were quite comparable to cormorants, so it is more likely they could walk upright, although they would have been awkward, and if they were able to stand, they would have stood well over a metre tall. However, they had even larger family members, like Canadega, that would most likely be much taller, around 1.5 metres tall. There were also considerably smaller members of this group, like Baptornis, that was about half the size of Hesperornis, but also they had proportionally much longer necks. Hesperornis were marine hunters, hunting fish and squid, and the long neck of Baptornis meant that it most likely specialised to eat smaller prey. At the time when Hesperornis was swimming the oceans about 90 million years ago, the Cretaceous seas were filled with giant monstrous predators, and although Hesperornis were actually quite large predators as well, they would have also been the prey for many larger creatures living at the time. They would have shared the water with the Ginzu shark that was a Cretaceous era shark that was bigger than a great white, and Zephactinus that was a 5 meter long bony fish that had a similar resemblance to a tarpon, only its fossils show that it had giant fangs. They would have just about eaten anything because a fossil of Esophactinus had been found with another smaller Esophactinus preserved inside its ribcage. However, the largest predators in the ocean during the Cretaceous were the marine reptiles the Mosasaurs, 
and unlike the other predators that we can speculate most likely would have preyed on the Hesperornis due to living in the same ocean at the same time, there is direct evidence that a giant mosasaur fed on Hesperornis. The fossil remains of a Hesperornis were discovered inside the stomach of a mosasaur known as Tylosaurus. Tylosaurus were one of the largest predators to have existed, possibly growing to 15 meters in length, similar in size to a sperm whale, and these marine reptiles are well known from the interior seaway so much of the Hesperornis' life would have been spent dodging getting eaten by much larger predators. However, they would have been prey for smaller predators as well, as the Hesperornis leg bone has been found with bite marks on it that look like they have been made by a young and small species of plesiosaur. The fossil also has signs that it got infected, suggesting that the Hesperornis survived the encounter. So fossil evidence shows that the life of a Hesperornis was terrifyingly harsh and often short. Canadaiga was not just very large, but also its fossils were found on an island in the far north of Canada, making Canadaiga the furthest north Hesperornithian. However, Hesperornis fossils have also been found in the Arctic Circle as well, and this makes sense seeing as the interior seaway where the Hesperornis lived stretched from Kansas all the way into the Arctic Circle. Even with global temperatures being much higher during the Cretaceous, the Hesperornis living in these areas would have experienced fairly cold winters, perhaps even with a small amount of snowfall. Many fossils of juvenile Baptornis have been found in the north, but not in the south, so it was thought that Baptornis and Hesperornis may have migrated up and down the seaway. Seeing if prehistoric creatures migrated or not is incredibly difficult, due to their fossils being a snapshot in time. However, bone tissue is affected by the way an animal grows, and will leave behind chemical patterns that can be observed millions of years later, and it was thought that the animals that don't migrate may have pauses in their growth due to seasonal differences in the availability of food. In 2014, the growth patterns of various Hesperornis fossils were compared with migratory and non-migratory penguins to make comparisons, specifically chinstrap penguins that migrate north during the winter and gentoo penguins that just sit it out. The results of the study were inconclusive, and similar methods have been used to see if dinosaurs migrated that also had similarly inconclusive results, so it isn't known for certain if they migrated or not. However, studying the growth patterns of many Hesperornis fossils did show that they reached maturity very quickly, perhaps within a year. Unfortunately this doesn't tell us if they migrated or not, but growing up fast is usually something seen in animals that live very harsh lives, dodging being eaten by many predators. So Hesperornis shows that birds with teeth weren't just an awkward transitional stage before they developed beaks, and evolution is more complex than this. Many birds with teeth evolved to fill many niches across the world, including adapting to favour swimming rather than flying, like the beaked birds would also do many millions of years later. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes to all my patrons, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.